I think get frustrated with from time to time. We get that big ring of keys. We want to reduce it. So we're going to be talking about that today uh, and trying to help you. Our mission at LockDock Security is to help you protect your people and your property. And we are trying to do that through answering commonly asked questions and trying to explain maybe some of the more complex things uh, in a little bit more detail that we, we get asked about frequently or, or situations that we run across. So this is Kevin Starr. I'm Chad Lingefeld, And uh, we're excited to, uh, to answer this question today. So Kevin, it looks like you brought us an, an object lesson. Yes, I have a display for today. <laughs> We've got some toys here to play with. Very cool. So what is uh, that scenario? I've got a bunch of keys. What is a, pl a plausible way to reduce that number of keys if I'm managing multiple facilities or just a, a lot of keyways? Or a lot of key systems, I guess. So you hit the nail on the head. Uh, that is a very real problem. I've talked to a lot of facility managers that have the giant ring of keys and are like, this thing weighs a ton. I can't, I can't stand to carry it around. Sure. So how do we solve that problem? Today, we're going to be talking about a composite key system that's going to help you reduce those keys while also maintaining the level of modularity that you need to keep a key system secure. All right, so when you say composite, you, you mean it's a, made up of multiple parts? No, 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 it's still a, still a brass key, <laughs> still a brass cylinder. Um, basically, when I say a composite keyway, what I'm referring to is a keyway that can accept multiple different uh, keys or key blanks, but are still com uh, controlled by one centralized key. Gotcha. So this is your composite key. Okay. Very cool. All right, so what's a, a typical scenario that this would, would play into? Sure. So the example that we're going to go through today is let's assume that you are a facilities person for a school system. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in this particular setup, we have an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school. All right. And the three keys represented here are the master keys to each school that would belong to, say, the principal. Okay, so the principal's got a key, a master key for each of their individual schools, and then I, as a facility manager, would have to also carry uh, one of those keys. Correct. If you were looking at a singular key system, so the same key that would be at all three schools, uh, if you, unless you were to great grandmaster this as a facilities manager, you're going to be carrying three keys, three masters, to get into each building. All right. So let's assume for a second uh, that our elementary principal wants to take a walk over to the high school and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So she comes up to the front door. Oh, man. They, they probably have, like, uh, better sports equipment or something. Probably. So I just want to borrow that. Yes. She's going to get some basketballs out of the gym. <laughs> so she comes up, and the key will not even go into the cylinder. All right. And let's say the reverse is true for some reason that the high school principal wants to go check out the cafeteria down at the elementary school because they have juice boxes. Well, I mean, um, that's a thing. Her key will not even go in that cylinder either. Same thing with the middle school principal. Um, each one is separate and independent in and of itself. So there's no crossing that kind of goes in here. But with the composite key that we have here that our facility manager likes to carry around, mm -hmm. it will go into all three so they can get into the elementary school the middle school and the high school with a singular key so I, i'm trying to process that my, is this in my brain to think through maybe a different way to apply it and and in a hierarchy mm -hmm. this is kind of like uh the the mother key correct and then each of these uh particular cylinders or keys are, are going to represent children so that is correct that, these are your children keys mm -hmm. and this is your mama key so that's kind of a hierarchy so uh this type of a setup this type of a structure is it only applicable for school systems absolutely not um school systems or any type of multi-facility type of I guess you could call it a conglomeration, okay. uh, is kind of your typical setup for this. Uh, but you also will see this a lot in high-rises or large office buildings. And typically, like in the instance of a high-rise, they will rotate the key about every four floors. Okay. So this particular key may operate one through four, four through eight, eight through 12, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so you can break it up in a, in a couple of different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be in separate buildings, but it can be in separate areas. Correct, just separate areas. That's, that's the biggest thing is if you have separate areas that you're trying to um, compartmentalize, sure. this is going to help you achieve that. So I know this can happen in uh, electronics as well. So a, a, in an access control system or a key card system, you can control different areas and have one that goes over. Intelligent key is another way mm -hmm. that, can, that can happen. This is more 
more on a, a kind of a standardized mechanical key system. So it's going to be more economical to, to do this. Yes, this is going to, again, allow re access or restrict access to certain areas. So you got a large number of doors, large number of openings, large number of keys, and you want to kind of simplify that so you don't also have to carry a large number so of keys. So you don't have to carry a large, absolutely, because that is like one of the number one gripes, especially if, you, if you're... If you're managing a very large facility mm -hmm. or you're managing multiple facilities, I mean, you have got that giant ring and it's it's heavy. Well, it's, I, just kind of on a side note of that, I've seen situations in the past, once keys get so, the, so once that key ring gets so big that oftentimes people don't want to carry it with them and it tends to be left in places, mm -hmm. which creates a security issue if someone picks those keys up and now they're missing. Yes. So the reducing the number of keys is also going to uh, keep those keys with you as, right. a, as an individual. Right, and, and with the, the scenario of leaving it behind, we actually had a customer, that, that's exactly what happened. They had a large ring of keys uh, grow legs and walk away because they didn't want to carry it, and mm -hmm. it got left somewhere, and it got gone, and it became a huge security issue in an emergency. So again, as uh, we say, our mission is to help you protect your people and your property, and uh, reducing the number of keys, having a better control of that, limiting the areas that people can get in and out is definitely a way that uh, that can happen. So if they want to get a hold of you to talk you, about this, because I would imagine this is something that uh, you, it's going to take a, a little bit of an investigation to figure out, is this the right application for my facility? Sure, absolutely. Uh, if you have any questions, you can certainly shoot us an email at sales.lockdoc.net, or you can give us a shout on the phone. Very cool. The link uh, to all of that information is listed in the description below, and we, we definitely work with uh, a lot of facilities like this on a regular basis, but we also have a lot of questions similar to this on our website. So you can visit that at locdoc.net slash help. Again, the link is in the description below. You can go check that out. And if there's anything that we can do to help, make sure you let us know and we'll be happy to walk you through this scenario. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time.